Welcome to China in Focus. I'm Tiffany Meyer. Our top story is China cashing in on America's lithium mining while U.S. taxpayers pick up the tab. More on how this could be happening linked to a massive mining project in Nevada. More trouble for TikTok. Reports say the Federal Trade Commission has been investigating the platform over its data and security practices. A surprising second use for an online dating app, young job hunters in China are flocking to Tinder, using the platform for career networking instead of dating. And a new threat against Shenyan performing arts, this time menacing bombs and a mass shooting. The warning is the latest in a string of threats at theaters and venues over the last week. Plus, calls for an investigation into a U.S. customs officer at Chicago's O'Hare International Airport for allegedly discriminating against performance artists over their faith. An over $2 billion loan from the U.S. Department of Energy is set aside for a Canadian mining company. The goal is to help it build a lithium mine in Nevada, home to the largest lithium reserve in the U.S. But an expert is raising concerns about the company's China ties. Here's more. It's official. An over $2 billion loan, one of Washington's largest investments in the mining industry, is going to a Canadian company with China ties. The company is called Lithium Americas. It's building a lithium mine in Thacker Pass, Nevada, site of the largest lithium reserves in America. This mineral is critical to the production of electric vehicles. But the U.S. only produces about 1 percent of the global supply. And it has been relying on imports from China and Australia. The loan is the Department of Energy's bid to bolster U.S. energy security. In a statement, the agency said the loan would supercharge clean energy manufacturing nationwide. But now concerns haven't been cleared regarding the Canadian company's China ties. Only U.S. companies should be mining those elements, not even companies from uh, Mexico or Canada, because of the the reasons that we're seeing that uh, China can backdoor us. Uh, by simply investing in these companies, uh, and then these companies are winning these contracts at at the expense of the U.S. taxpayers. A Chinese mining giant called Gunphone used to be Lithium America's largest shareholder. But the Chinese connection has raised eyebrows. And to qualify for federal loans, Lithium America's has to remove China from its supply chains. In 2023, General Motors said it would replace Gunphone as Lithium America's biggest shareholder. Amid U.S.-China tensions, Lithium America also split itself into two units, one in North America, the other in Argentina. It's unclear how much stake Gunphone holds in Lithium Americas. It has an over 46 percent stake in one of Lithium America's projects in Argentina. This March, news broke that Gunphone would buy a 15 percent stake in another project under Lithium Argentina. NTD reached out to Gunphone and Lithium Americas, but did not hear back before airtime. The Energy Department loan is conditional and depends on its review of the project. U.S. solar panel makers hoping to step up their competition with China. The Biden administration is touting a business deal as proof that its subsidies are working and helping American solar companies boost their output. Two small solar makers struck a deal on Wednesday. One is based in Georgia, the other in Canada, and they're starting a new joint venture. To help the project, developers using those solar products can claim a 10 percent tax credit. That's for using components made in America. The benefit comes at a critical time. A report from the Financial Times says U.S. solar manufacturers are in a dire situation because Chinese-made solar panels are flooding the U.S. market, driving prices to record lows. And even with Washington's tariffs and subsidies, American solar panels are struggling to compete. The chief executive of America's largest solar manufacturer told the Financial Times that China does not want the U.S. to have its own domestic industry, adding that it's a pretty dire situation. 
TikTok could soon have more trouble on its hands. The Federal Trade Commission has reportedly been investigating the Chinese social media app and could sue it in the coming weeks. That's over alleged violation of a children's privacy law and for allegedly deceiving users by denying China had access to their data. The report comes from Politico, citing unnamed sources. Sources told CNN that officials are also investigating a potential violation of the FTC Act, which prohibits deceptive acts that affect commerce. So far, no official comment from the FTC or TikTok. This comes alongside a growing congressional push to possibly boot TikTok from the U.S. Earlier this month, the House passed a bill that calls for TikTok's China-owned parent company ByteDance to sell the platform or be banned from U.S. app stores. The bill now faces the Senate. President Biden said he would sign it if it reaches his desk. TikTok previously denied allegations that the platform is a national security threat to U.S. citizens. Trading romance for work. As China's youth unemployment reaches new heights, a report says young people are flocking to Tinder, but not to look for love. Instead, they're hoping to land jobs. Speaking to NBC News, one job seeker said she decided to give the platform a go after applying for more than 400 jobs without hearing back. She explained the dating app helps her make inroads with fellow professionals. According to China's National Bureau of Statistics, the country's official youth unemployment rate hit nearly 15 percent last December. And just prior to that report, the regime had stopped releasing data for six months. That's after the total rate skyrocketed to a record of 21 percent across the country. Even for college graduates with promising degrees, there simply aren't enough jobs to meet demand. Then there's culture aspects to it as well. As the regime's leadership vows to ramp up innovation in the technology sector, some companies started demanding that staff work intensive long hours for low pay. The job model triggered a large number of young people to opt out and rely on their parents instead. A bomb threat and warnings of a mass shooting targeting the headquarters of a New York-based performing arts group Tuesday. Shen Yun Performing Arts is an American arts group founded by Chinese dissidents. The classical Chinese dance group uses classical dance and music to depict Chinese culture from before communism. Because of it, the company has become a priority target for the Chinese communist regime. Some of Shen Yun's pieces portray scenes of the regime's persecution of faith still taking place in China today. That's including the state-sanctioned practice of forced organ harvesting used to fuel China's lucrative transplant market. Violent threats against the arts group seem to be escalating, with four bomb threats in just over a week. NTD's Jeremy Sandberg has the update. A new bomb and mass shooting threat was sent Tuesday to Shen Yun Performing Arts Headquarters in New York. A series of emails obtained by the Epic Times state in Mandarin multiple C4 explosives have been placed, demanding a $58 million ransom with a Wednesday deadline. The email threatens to detonate bombs and turn the headquarters into ruins if the money isn't sent into a PayPal account by 3 p.m. Then another email from a separate account makes a mass shooting threat and doesn't ask for money. That email also in Mandarin threatens in the near future individuals will sneak onto the property, throw grenades, and shoot everyone on sight. Another separate email sent the same day launches into an expletive-laced rant, seemingly upset that Shen Yun reported the threats to police and media. The email chides the FBI and exclaims the agency isn't worth worrying about at all. The sender declares they will keep sending threats and eventually wear the police out with, quote, the boy who cried wolf. The email ends by threatening, then one day a bomb will really be put in a theater. This comes after weekend bomb threats in California and British Columbia at venues where Shen Yun was performing. The threats prompted evacuations and police bomb sweeps, but no explosives were found. A Shen Yun representative says the FBI has been notified and is investigating the threats. Jeremy Sandberg, NTD News. We've learned more about the U.S. Customs officer who allegedly discriminated against Shen Yun artists at Chicago's O'Hare International Airport. Multiple artists said they heard the officer telling his colleagues the group was illegal and couldn't enter the U.S. because they practice Falun Gong. 
Customs and Border Patrol says it strictly prohibits profiling on the basis of race or religion. A Chicago nonprofit group is now calling for an investigation into the officer's conduct, alleging he used Chinese Communist Party hate propaganda in his official capacity. NTD's Jack Bradley has the details. We broke a story earlier this month at Chicago's O'Hare International Airport. A U.S. Customs officer whose last name is Ho, a Chinese immigrant from Beijing and is fluent in Mandarin, allegedly targeted the performers while they were re-entering the U.S. after touring in Europe. Officer Ho allegedly told the dancers that they were illegal because of their faith, even though they are U.S. citizens or hold legal visas. Officer Ho is still currently working at the O'Hare Airport. The Midwest Falun Dafa Association, which is the present of Shen Yun is calling on U.S. Customs and Border Protection to investigate the incident. They said in a statement, we are deeply troubled by the discrimination and never did we anticipate that a federal government official, especially a customs officer, would delve into an individual's personal beliefs. Such conduct not only violates federal government policy, but also undermines the foundational principles of our nation, freedom of belief. A Customs and Border Protection watch commander said that they're investigating the incident. Many of Shen Yun's artists have experienced persecution firsthand by the regime in China for practicing Falun Gong, also known as Falun Dafa. It's a meditation practice based on truthfulness, compassion, and forbearance, and it's been banned and persecuted in China since 1999. A Shen Yun vice president said that these threats are the Chinese regime's last-ditch effort to hide the truth. Members of Congress like Congressman Scott Perry and Michelle Steele have sent letters to the Customs and Border Protection demanding answers. Reporting from Washington, D.C., Jack Bradley, NTD News. A troubling agenda revealed one of the world's largest news outlets is pushing narratives in line with Beijing's propaganda. It specifically targets Falun Gong, a spiritual group heavily persecuted inside China. To discuss what's behind the smear agenda, we sat down with Levi Browdy, executive director of the Falun Dafa Information Center. His organization just released a new report examining the New York Times' coverages on Falun Gong throughout the years. Levi, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. So in terms of this report, it's over 40 pages. Why publish it now? So this year marks the 25th anniversary of the persecution of Falun Gong in China. One thing that's been very disturbing is the coverage or lack thereof in the Western press of the Falun Gong human rights abuses in China. And at the center of that problem, really, unfortunately, is the paper of record, the New York Times. What we saw is the New York Times was pretty much off the mark from the very beginning. The New York Times coverage of Falun Gong, first of all, was taking the lead from the CCP itself in terms of how to frame Falun Gong and how to talk about Falun Gong. And worse yet, I mean, one of their, I would say, big events of those first few years is the publisher of the New York Times flew to China and met with Jiang Zemin, the leader of the CCP at that time, the man who had architected the persecution against Falun Gong, as the Washington Post had disclosed a year earlier. And so here was the leadership of the New York Times meeting with the leadership of the largest tyrannical communist regime on earth at a time when they were what many scholars and some lawyers call engaged in a genocide against Falun Gong. When we look at the coverage of Falun Gong by the New York Times, often you see the terms evil or cult, which sounds very similar to what the Chinese Communist Party calls it. What did you find out in terms of that and maybe why the New York Times was towing that party line? So that was another disturbing aspect because, yes, the, the, when the Chinese regime started the persecution of Falun Gong, they weren't using that term. They didn't really know what they were doing and they sort of stumbled into a public relations nightmare. Months later, after the persecution started, they realized, oh, we need to have an excuse to the world. So the regime started using that term, the cult term. And of course, a lot of the media were, were reporting on that, that they were using it. What's disturbing of what we found in the New York Times is they seem to really internalize that idea. And so in some of their reports, they're not using quotes or attributing it to the Chinese regime. They're saying it themselves in their own voice as fact. They seem to be on the attack where they're not only regurgitating the old CCP framing in terms of the character of Falun Gong and what we're doing, but they've, 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 they've upped the ante a little bit and it's gotten more hostile and more attuned to kind of hot button issues in the West in terms of trying to convince 
it seems their readership that there's something really wrong with Falun Gong and they're not to be trusted as opposed to there are still tens of millions of people in China being violently persecuted and that's really a real story. One of the recent New York Times pieces that was covering, I think some of the, it might have been the Epic Times, but they made a, a lot of reference to Falun Gong and one of, the, one of the references they cited is that Falun Gong is racist because it prohibits interracial marriage. Now this is important because this is a propaganda talking point that the Beijing put out at about 2009, 2010. Notably, they only put this propaganda out in the West where they know that talking point is a, is a pertinent issue. Also notably, it's demonstrably false. If you go into any Falun Gong community here in the United States, around the world, um, there's interracial marriage, interracial children. It's, it's completely a non-issue. It's totally fabricated. And so they've taken the cult narrative that was domestic in China from 20 years ago and they've updated it. And they seem to have weaponized it to try and go against Falun Gong and Falun Gong related initiatives here in the United States and around the world. That's all for today's China in Focus on YouTube. We're now sharing a shortened version of our program here after being demonetized for three years. If you'd like to support us, consider donating. Find us at donorbox.org slash China dash in dash focus or subscribe to our partner platform Epic TV where you can watch our full episodes. Just click the link down below. Here's what to look out for in our second half. More details on how the New York Times is working on a hit piece against Shen Yun after years of underreporting on human rights abuses in China. An investigative journalist weighs in. And China's regulators closing the doors on financial asset exchanges in multiple major cities. What does it mean for China's economy? Experts tell us more. The reason they're closing down all those uh, uh, centers uh, is because of the poor performance of Chinese economy. For round-the-clock original news coverage, visit us at ntd.com or download our NTD app. Thanks for watching China in Focus. I'm Tiffany Meyer. See you tomorrow.